All right, guys, I need to just stop the nonsense. I have a new strategy and you really need to listen up because we need to start going with the obvious safe plays, okay? And what I wanna talk about in today's video is uh, my big technology cash flow strategy. Big tech is my favorite, but there is a caveat on how you wanna trade big tech because if you're not trading it properly, you're just not gonna get the right results. So for me, for example, I wanna show you a crazy trade. I'm gonna go into a lot more detail here, but I ended up putting a lot of money into Apple and I actually ended up selling some uh, covered calls here. So I have uh, 30 contracts I made money on. I actually had the most insane Apple play of all all like literally I ended up selling 3,000 shares at 182 and then I bought back 3,000 shares at 176 so that was a huge swing play and I'm actually going to have a whole video dedicated to that but look listen up Technology companies make a lot of sense, and I'm gonna go over some of the best investors, what they're holding, and why the top 10 most owned stocks are tech stocks like Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Meta, and you know, Apple. Apple's actually one of Warren Buffett's biggest holdings, and there's a really big difference between Warren Buffett and the rest of these super investors. Okay, so I've been looking at these super investors because I've realized how popular this is. Everyone's literally looking at, what are other people buying? Is this a cheat code? Can I copy other people? And the answer is no, stop the nonsense. Stop Stop copying other people. I mean, if you go into YouTube, everyone's covering like the same stock. Like if I type in Nvidia, here we have someone covering buying Nvidia stock. Three reasons Nvidia could be in trouble. Nvidia stock, Nvidia stock, Nvidia stock. I mean, so many people are just covering Nvidia over and over and you see the same names of people covering Nvidia stock. And one video they say, is it a scam? The next video they're like, oh, this is the stock that I'm buying. You know, I've taken a look, I'm not following any of these channels myself, but if you look, just the same topic is Nvidia and you know these other companies like Lucid. I mean, looking at YouTubers, the reason why they cover this is uh, incentives. And I wanna talk about the incentives of not just YouTubers, but I also wanna talk about the incentives of big money managers, because a lot of us think that these big money managers, they share this stuff so we can copy. And that is true. I mean, there is something called a 13F filing where all these money managers, you know, they have a report basically that says what kind of stocks they're holding. And that's why we can see publicly what these people are investing in. So we can see a person like David, Einhorn, what he's buying. We can also look through the list here of other people. You know, there's uh, David Katz. Uh, there's so many other people here, right? And uh, even Charlie Munger, right? So we can see what people are buying and selling. And one of the biggest ones is Warren Buffett. I really want to pay attention to this because Warren Buffett is the only person that actually has a significant amount of money in Apple. And there's a really key difference between Warren Buffett and the rest of the managers. And again, that's incentives. So let me just start off with money managers. Their incentive is to charge two and 20 guys. I'm sorry, if you think that they're doing this for a charity, you are dead wrong, okay? These guys are charging two and 20. Two and 20 means, and I learned this in college, okay? So two and 20 is they charge 2% of what they're managing and then 20% of the results. Meaning if they get a 10% result, which by the way, they do all the time because the stock market average is 10%. So they take two and 20, okay? That means they're taking 2% of the all the assets plus 20%. So a 10% return means that they're taking two. So 2% plus 2% is 4%. They're literally stealing 40% of people's money legally and people are happily paying it. And guess what? You know, the smartest people would just put all their money into big tech because big tech just makes sense, okay? I have a lot of my portfolio in big technology. Like if I scroll down right now, you'll see that I have a lot of Apple, Amazon, Google, okay? I do have some technology companies in China as well, but I have a decent amount of money in technology as well as value stocks. I just think that value right now uh, makes a lot of sense given where the market cycle is. But look, tech stocks, they are the best, but a lot of people are not buying tech stocks. So if I go into Daniel Loeb, okay? Big famous investor, okay? If I click in here, he doesn't have it. Well, he does, but not that much. He only has Amazon at 7.83%. The reason why these investors don't put all their money in technology, which is the most obvious play, is because if they did, Who's gonna pay them two and 20? Who literally wants to pay 2% and 20 if they're just putting all their money in you know, ETFs or into the biggest cap tech companies? That's too obvious. So most investors won't even go for that. And that's why these guys are incentivized to put your money into really, really random things. Nvidia being one of them, that's cool. And other random companies, right? Nvidia is obviously not a random company. It's a good AI stock, but the valuation is over expensive in my opinion. Okay. But look, they're just mixing it up. Okay. Cause they get paid two and 20, but now let's take a look at Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett actually has a different incentive. He's just running a business. So when you invest in Berkshire Hathaway, he's not taking two and 20. 
he just has a fund that doesn't charge any fees because it's a holding company, okay? He's using the capital to invest in companies. So it's a very different metric and a very different structure that he has. And yes, I'm in Sweden, that's why we see some of these Swedish ads. But Warren Buffett has a totally different incentive structure and that's why he's so heavy on Apple because it's the most obvious play. So looking at incentives, you have to be really, really careful. And I'm gonna go into my plays right now because I'm just gonna you know, transparently show you where I have my money and I don't have an incentive. Well, I sort of have an incentive. YouTubers have the incentive of getting views. That's why they're trying to go for really popular videos that get views and will keep covering the same topic over and over again because 74,000 views and you know 69,000 views and they get a lot of views, 17,000 views. Lots of views, they get paid per view. YouTubers get paid per view, okay guys? So that means they are incentivized to get paid you know, more when they get more views. For me, I'm not really pushing a specific stock, okay? My favorite stock right now, my favorite two stocks is probably VTV, Apple. Do I have other stocks? Yes, Amazon, Google, Kraft Heinz, JD, American Airlines. This has actually been one of my favorite stocks. Look, nobody's pushing American Airlines. Why? Because it doesn't get views. But for me, this is a safe play because I've been making pretty good money trading options on American Airlines over and over running the wheel strategy. Okay, I have videos on the wheel strategy on this channel. So yes, I am also incentivized to get views, but I'm not going to push the same stock over and over and over and over again just to get views. Okay, I'm not interested in that. I'm trying to be authentic. Okay, PayPal is actually another big name. I've seen it on YouTube everywhere. I am very bullish on PayPal. PayPal is literally one of my very favorite stocks right now because it is at a 52 week low. All right, and because it's at a 52 week low, and I looked at the price to sales ratio uh, and price to earnings ratio, actually PayPal has a very, very good solid PE ratio. It's actually around 17, while the S&P 500 is around 20. So um, in my opinion, even if the bridge just kind of gaps from 17 to 20, this stock is over undervalued by, you know, roughly 20% or so. So I think this could be easily a $72 per share stock. Now, of course, if you go to YouTube and you type in PayPal, you're going to see that this stock is $100 per share stock. All right, people are going to say it's $100. And I've seen those thumbnails everywhere, right? Breaking news, $100. Uh, this is actually more realistic, actually, like, um, that these guys are saying $63, but you know, $100, you know, way too aggressive. My price target is actually 73. That's actually really, really accurate. Now, listen, would I just dump all my money in technology? Yes, but how would I do it specifically to make the most amount of profits while also protecting myself? Because, you know, I really want lower volatility. I mean, my portfolio has gone down, but this is actually not me going down. I'm actually still up on the year. Only reason why it looks down is because I've been withdrawing money and I've been diversifying into another brokerage platform because I don't want to have all my money in one single brokerage. Now, check out what I'm doing. So let me just go to a stock like Amazon, okay? And I actually want to add a lot more Amazon. I actually have a really interesting strategy. I have something called a covered strangle, okay? So this is kind of a, an interesting strategy, okay? It sounds complicated. If you're new to this, let me explain, okay? Let me explain it step by step. It's a very similar to the wheel strategy. And, you know, there's a little bit more nuance to it. Just check it out, all right? So the first thing I'm doing is I'm just buying, you know, 100 shares. You know, why 100 shares? Obviously, I'm an option trader and I love consistent income with options. That's what my whole channel is about. That's what I've been doing. That's why I'm in a different country every single month. I'm just traveling while I can. You know, while I didn't settle down, I still have the opportunity to travel the entire world, okay? So, you know, for me, I'm buying 100 shares and right here I have 200 shares. And with these 200 shares, what I wanna do is I wanna sell covered calls, right? You know, simple and easy. Once you have shares, you wanna make them work for you, okay? But it gets a little bit deeper than that, all right? So first of all, 200 shares and then I am selling some covered calls. So you can see right here that I have sold, you know, two covered calls at $135, okay? So this is actually an in the money covered call. And, uh, you know, it's pretty interesting because I bought Amazon for $132.89 and uh, I ended up selling $135 call option. So what that means is I have the shares. The call option that I sold means that I will have to sell my shares at $135. But I'm happy to do that because the stock's at $132 and if it goes to $135, I made a profit plus I collected income right here. I made money on the stock and I made money on the call option. Okay, As you can see, um, I'm up on the stock and I'm up overall on my options. Now, here's the caveat. Here's how you actually make it a covered strangle. So check it out. I'm actually gonna show you this strategy from uh, from scratch, okay? So 135 and 131, you know, pay attention to this and obviously you can do this in the future. So let me just go into October, for example. Let me go one month out. I do like 30 day options. I mean, for me, 30 day options make a lot of sense and you know, they're just easy. You open them up, kind of forget about them, don't touch them and they don't really take that much management if you do it correctly, especially with covered calls, because you know the worst thing that can happen is you just sell your stock for this 
you know, the price that you picked. Like, what's wrong with that? For example, Amazon at 135. I'm pretty happy. Of course, it's higher, so I may have to roll it, but you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens there. But you know, one step at a time. Trying to educate you in this video. Let's go with a uh, sell call, okay? So I'm gonna go with sell call. And let's just say I bought 100 shares now. What I would do is if I had 100 shares at 138, I would probably sell something like the 140 covered call, okay? Because I want to go out of the money. I want to make sure that the stock can go up a little bit, right? And then I'll collect some income as well. So $375. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm not just going to sell a call option. I'm going to actually show you another example. I actually have this position open. This is an example, but I'll show you a position that I actually have open on Palantir just a couple of moments. So I'm going to go sell call, okay? And then I'm going to also sell a put. I'm going to sell a call and sell a put. Okay, option seller here. Remember, option seller Henry. And you know, if you always want to see my plays and my videos right away, just make sure that you are subscribed to this channel. Cover a lot of good stuff on this channel. So, um, one thirty-six. I'm going to sell one thirty-six. Okay, that's two dollars and sixty cents down. So if I end up doing this, it's going to be a short strangle. Okay, this is a strangle position. However, it's not super accurate because something that Robinhood doesn't show you is if you're having shares or not, okay? So it's not gonna tell me, it's not actually showing me the right chart because if I have shares, then actually my downside here would not actually have a downside. It would just be green because the worst thing that can happen is I would have to sell my shares versus right now it's showing me that, you know, I have an unlimited loss, which is uh, not true, not true. It's only true, well, it is actually true if the stock goes up a lot and you don't have the shares, but I do have the shares. So what I'm doing is I'm selling these covered strangles right here. I'm selling this position, which, you know, gets me pretty good money, $688. However, since I have the shares, uh, you know, I'm not really at risk. I don't really have an unlimited downside. So that's basically what I'm doing. I'm selling covered strangles. And as you can see here, they're, you know, they're generating some income. They're doing pretty well. And there's, you know, kind of two reasons I'm doing this. One reason is I love option selling and option selling brings in premium. The second reason is when I'm selling covered calls, when this goes into the money, well, that's it. It goes into the money and I lose my shares. However, when I also sell puts against my covered calls, if this goes into the money, well, fine. I lose my shares, I make money, and then I even make more money from this sell put. Or let's say that its stock goes down, okay? Then I make money from my covered call position, okay? That's great and then I get to buy more Amazon. And check it out, why would I wanna buy more Amazon? Well, actually, I have it at 132.89. I sold a 131 put option, so if it goes into the money, I'm literally going to dollar cost average. So I'm literally using the strongest strategies that I possibly have, the most overpowered, unrealistically crazy strategies that are making consistent income. There's literally no other strategy that is consistent, okay? A lot of people preach buy car options, but you know, Yes, you can make a lot of money, but the most consistent strategy for me, and this is proven. I worked at Goldman Sachs. I literally read countless articles. I worked there for six months. Yes, I was an intern. I was not a full-time analyst there. I did this back in college. When I actually graduated college, I ended up not wanting to work in finance because I've already worked every single finance job. I've already worked at two hedge funds, Goldman Sachs. I've read every textbook. I've read every book, and I've been trading for like six years at the time. So I didn't want to uh, take a finance job. I actually took a job at IBM. So a little backstory on me. But anyways, okay, this is the best strategy. Research has proven it. The research is not public. It's private research because I worked inside Wall Street, okay? So for me, I'm selling both puts and covered calls. I'm dollar cost averaging, which is a super popular strategy. Okay, we all know dollar cost averaging works. Dollar cost averaging is actually even better than buying stocks at the best price that you can. If you just dollar cost average every single month, you will outperform basically every stock picker. And I mean every, the YouTubers and you know the super investors that everyone follows. So what I'm doing is I'm doing covered calls and I'm selling puts. And now I do wanna show you the position that I have on Palantir right now because I ended up doing this strategy on Palantir. And uh, it's pretty interesting because although this is a strangle, Robinhood is, it's pretty interesting because although this is a strangle, Robinhood is recognizing this as a two option strategy. But as you can see, I made $104 on Palantir stock. And if I click into this position right now, you're gonna see that I'm basically running this strategy. And it's actually interesting, they do call it a strangle now. But what I did was I sold 15.5 calls and I also sold $15 puts. I'm basically playing both sides. I'm expecting Palantir to stay in between this price. And if it stays in between this price, this is going to make me heaps and lots of money, okay? Lots and lots of money if it stays in between. 
So for me, I'd be running this type of strategy on big tech because dollar cost averaging into big tech makes a lot of sense for me. And just big tech in general is going to outperform. And the reason why more super investors don't have big tech is because their incentive structure is two and 20. So they want to charge money. And the only way they can even charge money is if they're not making obvious plays. They're kind of you know, making interesting plays that people are like, wow, I'm paying money for these interesting plays, but you're paying money to underperform. Same way that you're paying money for a financial advisor, potentially, that's just charging you fees. And same way that you're watching YouTubers that just get paid by the view for you watching the same video over and over. Like how many times can you watch the same Tesla video over and over? Seriously, guys, it's not that hard. Pick high quality companies. Tech companies are fast growing, have high profit margins, and their PE ratios are not that high, especially if you look at Google, okay? Google is actually lower than the S&P 500. So pick big tech companies and run the covered strangle strategy if you have enough cash flow. If you don't have enough cash flow, then use spreads. And if you don't know how to use spreads, I have the best video on spreads right here that you have to check out.